Hey guys, welcome to the very first video of my series on concurrent programming in Python. And in this video, we're gonna get our basics right and try to understand what actually is concurrent programming. So without any delay, let's get started. Okay, so before we move to concurrent programming, we first of all need to understand the meaning of the word concurrent, right? So concurrent is a word which is used to describe the things which are occurring um, at the same time. For example, concurrent users of a computer program. Let's say there is a multiplayer game in which multiple players are playing that same game at the same time. For example, you can take PUBG, right? So that is an example of a something which is happening, which is happening concurrently. And on the other hand, what is the opposite word for concurrent? It is consecutive. Consecutive refers to the things which are happening in a sequential order. Now, by sequential order, what we mean is that until the first thing is complete, we are not going to move to the next thing. But this is not the case with concurrent things because in concurrent things, while we are doing a particular thing, we can just halt it, we can stop it right there and we can move on to the another thing. Right, so that is what concurrent means. Now, uh, we might be interested in a real, real life example, right? Because they help us to understand the things better. So, let us take the example of um, something from engineering itself, which is sequential engineering versus concurrent design and manufacturing. So, while we are engineering something, there are multiple phases of creating a product. So, these phases are like requirements, uh, requirements, um, requirements, and planning. Then there is design analysis, design and analysis. Then there is an implementation phase. Then there is a verification or you can say evaluation phase. And finally, we have maintenance phase, right? So sequential engineering um, is basically um, referring to a particular case in which until requirement phase is complete, you cannot move to the design phase. And until design phase is not complete, you cannot move to the implementation phase. So all the phases are dependent upon each other and until the first phase is complete, you cannot move to the second phase. That is an example of um, a sequential thing which is happening here. The phases are occurring in consecutive manner. But now let's come to another um, model of engineering which is concurrent design and manufacturing in concurrent design and manufacturing what happens is that you start your planning you do requirements uh, analysis then you do designing and after that you do testing and then you do evaluation now you do not stop there actually you keep on in you keep on moving in the cycle and you again try to see if you missed any requirements uh, during your evaluation and then you add those requirements and then again you design with those requirements and then again you test then again you evaluate and if still something is missing you keep on moving in this particular cycle so in this way the requirement phase is never complete it is just halted and we just try to see if we can design something and if something is left while we are doing evaluation we again add something to the requirement so this is an example of something which is happening concurrently and once um, we are satisfied with the product we just move out of this cycle so this is a very simple but a very good example of difference between uh, something which is sequential versus something which is concurrent Having understood the meaning of concurrent, we are now ready to understand the meaning of concurrent programming. So, in very simple words, in a concurrent program, what happens is that you have several streams of operations which are executing concurrently. So now again we have the word concurrent, so let us try to understand it with a very simple example. Let's say you have a program in which you have multiple tasks to do. You have task 1, you have task 2, you have task 3, you have task 4 and you have task 5. Now, um, a sequential case of doing these five tasks would have been that you would just do the task one. Once the task one is complete, you move on to the task two and then three and four and five. But here, what we are seeing in this particular um, diagram is the example of a concurrent execution. What is happening here is that you do some task one, then you just switch to task two. This particular switching is also known as context switching. So you move on to task two, then you move to task three after some time, then four, then five, then again you move back to task one. So now the thing to understand is that task one was not complete yet when we had moved to, to task two in this particular case. So what happens is that task one had halted its operation and now it again resumes its operation from here once again after task five. Um, is stopped and now task 1 is again executing and after some time it passes its control back to task 3 and then task 2. 
so this particular case what is happening here is called concurrent programming and another aspect of understanding this particular thing is that we can say that concurrency is a property of system which enables overlapping of process lifetimes now overlapping of process lifetimes is quite an interesting concept what is happening here by overlapping of process lifetimes we mean that um, the Pro the lifetimes of the processes are actually overlapping with each other which simply means that we are not waiting for the completion of a process and then moving back to the another process while a process is um, being executed we are having another process also doing its execution during that particular lifetime so for example the lifetime of task 1 is let's say this particular lifetime right so during that task 2 was also being executed at some stage task 3 was also being executed 4 as well and 5 as well so in this way we say that the lifetimes of all these tasks are actually getting overlapped with each other so that is what concurrency is all about if you are able to um, allow the tasks to run in such a way that they can overlap their lifetimes then we call that then we say that we have achieved concurrency so this is what concurrency is all about but now concurrency is very similar to one more concept which confuses people a lot which is concurrency versus parallelism so what is concurrency and what is parallelism is a very confusing topic for some people so let us try to decode it one by one here so now in concurrency what happens is that you have some tasks you start the task you run the task and they complete in overlapping time periods we have understood the meaning of overlapping time periods right so you have tasks let's say task yellow and task red so while task yellow is um, is getting completed in during that time period only task red also started executing and it kept on executing right so this is an example of a concurrent execution concurrent execution where we were dealing with multiple things at once now the thing to understand dealing with multiple things at once but now come to parallelism here what we do is we try to do multiple things at once so in parallelism what we when we say that parallelism is happening when multiple tasks are running at the same time or you can say multiple tasks are running simultaneously now um, on single processor or single core systems it is not possible to achieve parallelism if you want to have parallelism what you need is a multi-core or multi-processor system so on multi-core systems each core is capable of running um, one process at a time so what you what you do is that you give task one to one processor you give task two to another processor and now both are executing your processes at the same time so in this way you are achieving parallelism your tasks are getting executed parallelly so now um, a very simple thing to remember just here is that in concurrency we deal with multiple things at once but in parallelism we do multiple things at once so that is the basic difference so this brings us to the um, almost the end of the video but I would like to stop it with a very simple story let us say um, there is a tourist spot where people go so that tourist spot has a very nice coffee machine which people try so there is a group of girls uh, which come to visit that place and now they have queued themselves up in front of the coffee machine and they are waiting for having their coffee they are getting it one by one and in the meantime some boys come there and they also queued themselves behind the girls and now they are waiting for their turn so if you consider girls at a, as a single process and the boys as a single process then this is an example of a sequential program this is the process one this is the process two and the process two is waiting for the total completion of the process one until process one is not complete process two cannot start so this is an example of a sequential um, execution right so now let's move to another case another scenario let's say the boys say that we are in a hurry our bus is um, getting late so we are also want to leave early so can you help us with that is there any solution so girls say yeah we can have two queues you just make another queue and we make this queue and now one girl will have coffee after that one boy then one girl and then another boy and in this way they think that they might get with this thing um, a bit early but actually that is not the case but still it is um, good enough to make them happy right so now the thing here is that um, what is happening here is we can say is concurrent programming because th the process one and process two are actually happening 
at the same time they are um, you can say overlapping they, their time periods are overlapping because when the process of girls is happening the boys process is also happening at the same time so this is what we can call as an example of concurrency right but now um, let us move on to a very more a bit more special case the owner of the coffee machine is quite kind and he knows that he has one more machine so a bit he just brings it and installs it there and now boys make one queue in front of the old machine and girls make a queue in front of the newer machine and now we can actually say that our task is gonna get speed up, speeded up and they are gonna get in their buses early right because boys are also getting their own coffee machine girls are also getting their own coffee machine and now both the tasks or you can say the processes are occurring simultaneously so they are not waiting for their turns one by one and then one process executing and then the other that is not the case here so this is an example of parallelism so whenever you feel like you are not understanding the concept of sequentialism then concurrency and parallelism then we just remember this particular story and we'll be able to understand it so yeah uh, if you still have any doubts you can put them in the comment section below and that's it from this video thanks for watching